Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Jerry Slusiewicz, who is here on behalf of Pacific Financial Planners. Well, welcome. How are you? Doing great, Lisa. How are you? Good, Thanks good. You know, me. I know people just have tons of questions for you all the time. And now, of course, we hear about the debt ceiling and, you know, inflation and job reports. I mean, it's just coming at us all the time. So we're glad you can make it and help us ease our fears. I'm hoping anyway. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of that stuff is is a lot of noise. There's always going to be a, a crisis du jour, right? <laughs> yeah. And and it doesn't really matter when you go back in time, et cetera. But some of these things are uh, cause alarm for people. But when you have a good, sound income strategy, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry as much because you're getting paid as you wait. Well, right. And I think that's one thing that you've always made very clear with everyone here is that you know, you put them in a position where they're not going to lose as much money or value as opposed to maybe somebody who isn't using someone like yourself. Right. I mean, again, we use insured and then non-insured investments. So there's no risk on the insured investments. And generally, again, it comes down to the client and what their needs are. We generally, we put about half the money into something that has absolutely no risk, mm -hmm. complete safety, mm -hmm. and can produce monthly income should they need it. Whenever they right. want to turn that income on, they can have monthly income for life. And right. that's one thing that we use quite extensively with some of our clients. Some of our clients, that's all they have. Yeah. Now we have risk investments as well. So when you have risk, you've got to decide how much risk are you willing to take. Right. Most advisors have a hold and hope strategy. Mm -hmm. We don't. We have a manage the risk strategy where we do take less risk. And in addition to that, we try to use income vehicles mm -hmm. that pay either monthly, semi-annually, or quarterly dividends. Mm -hmm. And when you're getting paid along the way, those companies, those institutions, those bonds, if you will, are safer than someone who's just trying to go for pure growth, like a right. you know a Google or a Microsoft, and you know try to make your money in kind of the greater fool theory. Sometimes mm -hmm. you end up being the greater fool, like last year when the markets go down. Right. With our strategies, if they're paying you along the way, they generally don't go down, and we also use some really safe bonds in that strategy as well. And, and those are the kinds of things I think people need to hear right now because there is so much noise, like you mentioned. You know, we've got people fearing that their banks are going to go under and that all their money is going to go away. You're right, Lisa. I hear that one. I, my, I'll use my in-laws. <laughs> my father-in-law called me the other day and was asking me about Bank of America. Oh. And I'm like, that's the second largest bank in America. <laughs> They're not going to go under. Um, yes, they're, they're, it's not 2007 to 2009, and you're right. I get a call on that every single day, Lisa. Okay. That is the number one question. You know, some of the banks um, kind of mismanaged their assets through COVID, where they put a lot of their investments long term, and then mm. when interest rates spiked up, the price of the bonds went down. Right. And so some of their portfolios went down in assets. But it's still guaranteed. There's still, this wasn't some violation of the rules. It was probably just mismanagement. They should have staggered the maturities from short term to medium term mm -hmm. and then some long term, mm -hmm. like that Silicon Valley Bank put all their money out long term. So there was a right. run on the bank, yeah. classic run on the bank. And that's what we're seeing. But the federal government has basically you know, made everything FDIC insured. Now, I, I'm going to tell you right now, if you have more than $250,000 at an institution, just keep two hundred and fifty or less. Mm -hmm. If you have a trust and it's in the name of the trust, you have two hundred and fifty times the number of beneficiaries. So uh -huh. you have three beneficiaries, you have okay. seven hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, okay. If you have a question, they can always call me. But, okay. But the point is, is that we're not in the banking crisis mm -hmm. that we saw between two thousand seven two thousand nine. Not even close. Good, because I swear, you look at the news and everybody makes it seem like that's where we're headed. And it yeah. frightens the heck out of everybody, and it doesn't help our stock market either. Well, you know, the news is trying to sell hot dogs and Chevys. You know, you <laughs> got to have somebody who's really in it for financial education, financial planning, and make people understand what it is they own and how they own it, and then manage the risk accordingly. You know, when you talk about growth um, stocks, you know, there's that Jim Cramer guy that's on TV and he gives all sorts of advice. And plus there's lots of other resources that we could always go to. But is it really a good idea to go to all those resources? I mean, they're all just opinions. 
Lisa, you're absolutely correct. There's too much information, and that's the problem. You've got to figure out what's right for you. You need somebody who's been doing this, I've been doing this over three decades, that's going to sit down and understand what are your needs, what is your risk tolerance, mm -hmm. what, how much income do you need, how much money do you have, what are your goals and aspirations. Right. I call it the safer money system, sound advice for everyone's retirement. Mm -hmm. And it's different depending on your situation, might be different than mine, might be different than somebody else's. Right. And so with too much information, you could say, you could read an article, but you don't know who that article was geared toward. Was it towards 30 year olds mm. or 65, 70 year olds? Right. And that's kind of the thing is like, it might be an appropriate article for 30 year olds, 35 yeah. year olds, same with Jim Cramer. So okay. you know, good guy, smart guy, but sometimes he's a little off. I used to write for thestreet.com for a couple of years, which was his website. Oh, so got it. I All met right. him a few times, yeah. Okay, well, excellent, good information. Now, uh, let's talk about the forums. I know that you have forums the second Thursday of every month. What do those entail? Again, it's all financial education. We usually pick a topic, okay, and then we discuss the topic in a group forum. I mean, I ask a lot of questions, and then we have a second part of it all where we go around the room and everybody shares, if they want to, um, a little bit of what, what's going on, or they can ask a, a question, mm -hmm. and I can answer, but the group also answers. So it's a true forum of shared ideas amongst the community here in Laguna Woods Village. Clubhouse 7, 3 to 5 p.m., and different topics all the time. We mm -hmm. talk about the markets, the economy, and mm -hmm. things like the bank. You know, we do digress a little bit, I guess you could tell. I would imagine, I would imagine, because, you know, people come with questions. Uh, tell me one thing about the uh, forum. Um, what has been the residents that participate, what's been their favorite part? Well, I, you know, the, speaking on finance is uh, generally a very boring topic. <laughs> and I've had the ability, I did radio for about 20 years, so I've had the ability to kind of make it a little bit more, um, you know, exciting, if you will. I use humor. I was an award-winning speaker through Toastmasters for a number of years. Mm -hmm. So it's not a comedy show. I mean, not, <laughs> not at all. But in the end, um, it's financial education with right. no pressure. Right. It's just answering questions. There's no obligation. If you want to show up and you don't want to sign in and you don't want to participate, okay. you can sit there and learn whatever it is. If you have questions, you can write them down or you can ask in public. Okay. So I think, I think a lot of people who are afraid that they might look like they don't know what they're talking about, which, mm -hmm. look, in the end, this is a specialty. Finance is a specialty. If you were a business person, you know, whatever, uh, you know, had a, your secretary, a police officer, whatever it was, a lawyer, doctor, this, unless you had the time, temperament, talent to do this, you probably don't know as much as someone like right. me who spent, you know, three decades doing this. Right. So it's okay to ask questions. And I think that's their favorite part, is getting their questions answered Perfect. in a non-threatening format. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So speaking of education, you have a featured article in the Sorbet magazine, and you actually grace the cover. Look at that. There you go. Yeah. Mr. Professional. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> that looks great. And what's the article inside about? Well, it, again, it talks about the safer money system okay. and that we do. Now, I didn't write the article. Uh, the uh, the editor of the magazine. They did. Okay, it. great. Yeah, they, she, she interviewed me, and... Uh, she wrote the piece, and I was very happy with it, but, okay. you know, she made me look good. But, yeah, I've been a member of the community, active and all that, as you know. Yes. And, um, and again, I take my career very seriously. And a lot of people, it's just a job. To me, it's I really want to help people. Good. And uh, it was an honor to be featured on Sorbet Magazine this nice. month. All right. Well, thank you so much. Lisa, thank you for having me. If you want more information about anything that we have discussed, you can always get in touch with Jerry and his team at pfpinvest.com or call 949-219-0692. We'll be right back.